<laughs> okay. Hey, hi Nicole. Hello, welcome. Hi. Hi, good to see you. Now, so tell me, where are you right now? So I am actually uh, borrowing my boss's office because uh, it's a bit quieter than mine. <laughs> I'm at the uh, Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. Uh, I am a postdoc uh, here at the STEM Center for Research, Education, and Outreach, uh, and I have a background of a PhD in astronomy. Great, because this is how I actually um, introduce you, Nicole Gallucci, right? Yes, yes. Nicole Gallucci, scientist, astronomer, and educator. Does yes. that about sum it up? I think that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Do okay, all so the tell things. us a little about tell us a little bit about your work and the type of research that you're doing. Sure. So uh, right now I work for a project called CosmoQuest. It is a citizen science project. Uh, we get data down from different NASA missions, from uh, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter orbiting the moon, from the Dawn spacecraft that visited asteroid Vesta, and from uh, the Messenger spacecraft which visited Mercury. And we're getting all these great high resolution images uh, of these surfaces and they need to um, we need to map the surface features so we can understand the geology and history. And uh, we're asking people from the public, anyone who has an interest in science, to come to the website and help us map these uh, fantastic worlds. And this, uh, all the work you do goes to the database that the scientists use to um, do the current scientific research on these things. And so I'm involved in that and also building the educational materials to go along with the Citizen Science Project and doing a lot of the social media and, uh, and outreach. So you're crowdsourcing science, basically. Yes, exactly, exactly. We're getting help from a whole bunch of people to help us out with this data deluge that we're dealing with in astronomy and planetary science. But it sounds like fun. So how did you become, because what is that gadget you're wearing? If everyone's <laughs> wondering, what is that she's wearing? I mean, it looks scientific. <laughs> yes, I know. It looks, it looks, uh, looks techy, looks Star Trek-y. Mm -hmm. um, this is Google Glass. And so uh, a few months back, um, Google did a little contest to... Uh, giving people the chance to join their beta testers, basically, so the Glass Explorers program. And so I put in a couple of uh, Google Plus and Twitter tweets applications with the hashtag, uh, if I had Glass, saying what I would do if I had Glass. And uh, basically I said I'd be using it to keep doing the education and outreach work that I do, where I could uh, share the fun places I visit. Like, uh, for example, back in March I got to go to Chile and visit one of the big radio telescopes that's just been commissioned. Uh, or do just hands-on science demos and do tutorial videos on how to do those demos. And uh, so I got accepted in their program and went out to went uh, back to New York where I grew up <laughs> to uh, to buy glass. And so, how have you been using it now um, in your research? So I have done a series of short tutorials, uh, some of the hands-on science demos that I've uh, learned to do with. Um, when I was a grad student at the University of Virginia, we had a program called Dark Skies Bright Kids. We did lots of hands-on activities, astronomy activities with students. And so uh, I filmed myself doing a bunch of those. Uh, one in particular uses beads that are sensitive to ultraviolet light. And so you can use them to put them out in the sun and watch them change color. You can try different sunscreens on top of it to, uh, to see the difference in SPF. Uh, and because that involves a lot of running in indoors and out <laughs> out of doors, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to put this on and film the whole process, the whole activity, uh, rather than having to set up different cameras to do it. Uh, and also, um, I did a teacher professional development workshop uh, back in the summer. We had five teachers learning uh, how to use our, our uh, Terra Luna unit, which is all about geology on the moon. And so I was able to take part again in the, the lab activities and actually film uh, us doing the activities and, and some of their reactions from building moon landers and making rockets and making craters. Because I've seen actually a lot of your videos, and it's it's a different way of actually seeing something because yeah. it, we're really seeing it now from your perspective as opposed yeah. to you know like a camera's perspective, which could be in different spots. Right. So how do you think this is going to um, change the way people learn science? I think it'll give that that first person perspective is really good for giving people the chance to put themselves in the role of a scientist and this is a big message I always try and share when I talk to, to kids or adults is that you can do science too and that you can think scientifically about everyday choices or you can think scientifically about the big topics that scientists are researching and so you get that first person experience of what it's like even just sitting at a computer terminal controlling a telescope, uh, controlling a research grade telescope or things like that. Um, so giving that first person perspective I think is really good. I mean astronomers also travel a lot uh, so you get you get uh, a feeling for what that's like. 
Yeah, you make us feel like we have access to places that we may not normally right. go to. Right, exactly. Do you like that too? I mean, like uh, the access. I mean, with Google Glasses, it makes it seem like science is now accessible, not just to people um, in your state, in your city, but really to everyone worldwide. Yeah, yeah, I like being able to, to share that with as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, definitely. Because what kind of comments are you getting from people? Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, walking around in public in it with it is a little strange. Um, I get people will just kind of stop and stare and say, "What's on your head?" and "What's that on your face?" Uh, or those what, some kind of weird glasses. Uh, lots of people do recognize. Oh my gosh, that's Google Glass! Can I try it on? And so uh, last weekend I was at a conference. Um, in, last week I was at a conference in Boston, and I just I think half of the population of Boston tried on Google Glass <laughs> from when I, uh, either I was walking around town doing touristy stuff or when I was at the conference. Because explain exactly what, how you see things. Um, I mean, we sure. see it here. You see the glass, but there really yes. is no glass in front of your eye, right? Right, right. There's, there's nothing here. Um, there are, it, oh, it's, it's in another room, but there are little extensions you can put on. You can actually have sunglasses or clear glasses. I know a lot of people who, um, who uh, cyclists who have been using the clear ones. Um, but there's a little heads-up display in, in this prism right above my eye, and so it's not in my main field of view, it's just up here. And so if I tap the side of this or if I tilt my head up uh, to, to the right angle, uh, it'll turn on and then I can give it verbal commands or I can use the camera buttons and the swipe pad. Um, apparently when I'm, you know, checking my email whilst, you know, I, I have this far away look because I'm just looking up and <laughs> scrolling through. Uh, but it's, it's nice to have that stuff uh, when you're traveling to conferences, just to have that information at, like right there in front of you um, is, is pretty cool. So do you think this is going to change the way we, um, way teachers and professors teach science? Or is it just really just going to sort of like add to it? I think it's going to add to it. I think um, as the technology gets more widely adopted, uh, you can give people experiences they wouldn't otherwise have. If you can't plan an expensive rock, you know, geology field trip, or uh, if you can't take your whole class to the you know summit of a mountain where there's a telescope, you can still have someone do that remotely and share that uh, experience with the classroom through a hangout, uh, through um, you know that that live video conferencing. And I think that would be a really great opportunity for students to see that in action, uh, even if they can't actually go to that go to that location. Well, that's cool. Well, thanks, Nicole, for uh, hanging out with us at this Google Hangout. Yes. And you know, for more on your interview, and we're going to be actually interviewing other scientists too. Everyone, great. please stay tuned to Science and You um, on CUNY TV. We're available online too for those of you not in the New York area. Um, but it was such a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Know, you. It's great to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And the teaching. Yes, thank you so much. Take care. Great. Bye-bye.